everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the rotary dental instruments. For this same video in Arabic, kindly check the link in the description box below. So this is a burr holder to place all of the rotary instruments in it. Okay, so we're going to discuss today different rotary instruments, the carbide burrs, diamond points, and then some finishing and polishing tools. First, we will discuss the different parts of the rotary instrument. Okay, it's composed of different parts. So the first part is this part here, the cutting part or the part that has the flutes. Okay, this is called the head. Okay, followed by the neck, the part in the middle, and then we have the shank. So these are the three parts of the rotary instrument. So let's start first with cutting carbide burrs. Okay, this is the first one. This is a straight fissure burr. It is cylindrical in shape. Okay, and you can see the flutes on, on the head. Okay, so we can see it is cylindrical in shape. And these parts in the head Okay, this is called the flutes. Okay, so these are the flutes of the burr. Okay, so this is the first burr. We will discuss the differences between the high and low speed uh, burrs uh, later in the video. Okay, so we'll move on to the second burr. This is the number 245 burr. We can see that it is not completely cylindrical, but it has like a rounded edge. Okay, the head is rounded. Um, it is not flat, uh, such as the a carbide straight fissure burr. And uh, let's see here the difference between both of them. So you can see that the, on the right side, you have the straight fissure burr, and on the left, you have the number 245 burr. The straight fissure burr is cylindrical and it has a flat top, okay, and it is side cutting. But the number 245 burr is side and end cutting, okay? And when we measure the length of the head with the Perio probe, you can see it is 3 millimeter in length, okay? Let's go to the following burr this is the 330 burr or pear shaped burr you can see that it is also not cylindrical and it is pear shaped and pointed on the top okay when we want to measure its length using the perio probe we can see that its length is approximately one and a half millimeter in length. Okay. The following burr is pear shaped. Okay, is a pear shaped burr. And we can see that it is more rounded on the top, unlike the 330. Okay, but it is very similar to the 330. Okay, the following burr is the tapered carbide fissure burr. Okay, it is not cylindrical in shape. Okay, it is tapered. So there is a difference between this burr and the straight fissure burr. Okay, so this is more tapered. Okay, and it comes in different length and this is the long one. But it can be available in different lengths. Then we have the inverted cone burr and we can see from its shape that it is like a cone but inverted from the name, okay? Uh, and it is flat. It has a flat end, okay? After that, here we have the round carbide burr. Okay, so it is rounded in shape. And all of these burrs come in different sizes. So all of the burrs they come either in high speed or low speed. How are we going to know the difference? We're going to look at the bottom. Okay, if it comes 
like rounded and smooth in the bottom. This is the high speed. When you see this little thing, this is the latch type. This means that it is low speed. Okay, so the high speed is called frictional rip and the latch type is low speed. Moving on to the finishing instruments. The finishing instruments can be either diamond points, okay, or car carbide birds. This is the diamond points here, and in the back here, this is the carbide bird, okay? So it's either diamond points or carbide. What is the difference between the diamond points and the carbide birds? The difference is in the manufacturing. So we can see that in the diamond points, the surface is different. It is made from diamond particles. In the carbide, they had flutes. So we can see here the flutes, okay? And uh, the diamond points or the carbide burrs can be either cutting or finishing, but this is the finishing carbide burr, and we're gonna explain details. So starting with the diamond points, okay? We can see here, as we said, they come cut either cutting or finishing. So we can see that there are different colors. We have white, yellow, red, and blue. Okay, and also we have green and black, but they're not available here in the burr holder. Okay, so when we look at these diamond points, we can see that the main difference is the grittiness, okay, of the surface. So the lighter color is more fine, and the darker color is more coarse, okay? So this is the main difference, and these are the color coding. Okay, so we can see that we have finishing and cutting from the diamond points. Okay, so let's start with the cutting diamond points. Diamond points come in different shapes, so it's not exclusive that each color comes in a certain shape. No, they come in different shapes and sizes. This is the tapered diamond point. These three colors are the cutting diamond points, so the black is the super coarse followed by the green followed by the blue. Moving on to the finishing diamond points, we have the red, yellow, and white. So this is the red. This shape is called the needle diamond point. We can see that the coarseness is finer, okay, compared to the blue. And uh, this is also the sequence. The red is more coarse followed by yellow followed by white. So now we have the yellow diamond point. This shape is called short flame or football and we can see that it is also a finer grit than the red, okay? Let's look at the white. We can see that it is even finer, and this is a flame shape, okay? So the rule is the lighter the color, the finer the grit. The darker the color, the more coarse the grit, okay? Each color is available in all the shapes. Moving on to the carbide finishing burr, we can see that it also has flutes, okay? But the flutes are a lot. It is more than 12 flutes. So if we want to compare the carbide finishing burr with the carbide cutting burr, okay, we can see the difference in the flute number, okay? So the carbide cutting burr has more spaces between the flutes and the carbide finishing burr has less spaces between the flutes because in the cutting, you want to remove two structures, so you need space between the flutes to collect two structure, but in the finishing, less space because you don't want to remove a lot of the two structure. Moving on to the finishing and polishing discs, okay? Uh, this is the discs, and this is the mandrel, okay? So it comes in a kit, and we're going to explain it in details in a separate video, but this is the mandrel, okay, which attaches to the handpiece, and this is the disc. The disc comes in different sizes and different grits. You're just gonna snap it in and it will be attached and then you're gonna use it. Okay, and as we said, we're going to explain it in details in a separate uh, video. Lastly, we have the finishing stone. Okay, this is made from mountain stone and it is very, very aggressive, okay? It comes in high speed Okay, but it's very aggressive, so we don't use it anymore. But I'm just, I just put it here for you uh, to see and know what it is. But we do not recommend using it because it will uh, abrade a lot from the tooth structure and from the restoration. Okay, it is very aggressive. We no longer use it. Moving on to the polishing instruments. 
okay we're gonna start with the rubber points okay the rubber points also comes in different shapes uh, it is made out of rubber with impregnated granules in it it is low speed usually all polishing instruments are low speed okay so it is made out of rubber but it's like a little hard it doesn't bend and you do not need uh, polishing paste with the rubber points moving on to the rubber cup we can see that it is very soft okay and you need to use a uh, polishing paste with it you cannot use it alone so it's not like the rubber points okay after that we have the polishing brush so it's a brush similarly to the toothbrush and it is uh, low speed okay this is very similar to the polishing cup that you need to use with it the polishing paste and as we just mentioned compared to the rubber points the rubber points you don't need to put with it a polishing paste because it already has impregnated granules so in this video we explained the main uh, rotary tools that you're going to use for uh, operative procedures Thank you very much and see you in the next video.